Welcome to the NTN Nightly. I'm Nisha Charles. This edition's top stories. The National Sports Academy is now fully functioning. The Ministry of Education moves with haste to address conditions at the Entrepot Secondary School. Key stakeholders applaud government's $42 million road improvement project. All that plus the NTN Nouvelle Arqueol. The National Sports Academy is now in full function offering St. Lucia's best in sporting talent an opportunity for a specially tailored education. The St. Lucia Sports Academy has become a home away from home for 37 students who have enrolled there. The School of Excellence for Sports is the first and only boarding school on island where students will concentrate on sporting disciplines including cricket, football and track and field. Academics will also feature prominently within the curriculum. For the school's principal, Delia Charles, the initiative by the government of St. Lucia and the Ministry of Education is a welcomed one, one that she believes addresses the thinking that one size does not fit all when it comes to education. Too often we have spoken about one size fits all and we cannot meet the needs of the students and the talents of the students. So the Ministry of Education decided to create something new, something different and to give these children with the sporting abilities that facility where they can balance both academics and sports right there on one compound. Additionally, it's the dream of the Prime Minister and he was behind that project wholeheartedly. So I believe these are the two main reasons why we have this school here today. From dawn to dusk, the students are engaged both physically and mentally in activities that will prepare them to gain sports scholarships abroad. Victor Cornibert is the program director at the Sports Academy. In the morning, we begin with um, what we call general conditioning, which is um, we put them through some exercise routines. It's, um, we have three sporting disciplines. However, we put, bring all of them together in the morning at 6.30 and we do general conditioning. That could include gym and running and exercises. After that, they go for breakfast at 7, seven at 7.45. They shower and then they get ready for school at nine o'clock, which is the academic aspect. And then they come back, we give them a snack at three o'clock, and then we begin specific training according to the sports at 3.30 until 5.30. But it's not just about sports or academics. The program seeks to develop the students holistically. Well, in the dumb life, they have to learn to socialize. They have to learn to follow rules and obey rules. You know, we're looking at the discipline aspect of it. Also, um, we're looking at how they get giving them that uh, opportunity to kind of like um, improve on their specialized area, which is either football, cricket, or track and field. And um, also the academic class, we're trying to get them to marry the two together. Um, we have at present, we have what we call academic support that we'll be providing to them. We have some tutors coming in to do some work with those who are slow, those who need assistance. So we're trying to get a well-rounded holistic child through that program. The students are provided with all the necessary tools and support for the journey ahead, including school supplies, uniforms and equipment. They are also grateful for the opportunity to bond with their peers. It helps with your social environment, like interacting with others, know how to deal with certain situations that you wouldn't just go out there and purge in and want to fight or so on. So it helps you to calm yourself, I must say so that your peers will tell you, okay, you do something wrong, that's wrong, you listen to one another. What do you hope to gain from the experience being part of the first sports academy? For me, and I see for my peers, I see that getting our scholarships and going to the next country to further our education and the sport we do. The St. Lucia Sports Academy opened on September 11, 2019. The Ministry of Education, Innovation, Gender Relations and Sustainable Development is moving with haste to address conditions at the Entrepot Secondary School. On Friday, 18th October, teachers complained of feeling unwell during the course of the workday and left. Chief Education Officer Fiona Meyer says the Ministry was apprised of poor air quality at the school. The school has been plagued with mold infestation. However, the Ministry has begun remedial works. Our building officers are here, our quantity surveyors also here. We've got our education officer for District 3, 
and various members of our team. Our safety officer from the Ministry of Education has also accompanied me and we've spoken with the principal and vice principal of the school, the leadership of the school, ensuring that they know, as we have communicated in the past, as of last week and the week before that, that the health and safety of our entire school community, our staff and our students, remains of the most significance to us. And therefore, the urgency with which we've dealt with the situation as soon as we got word of the mold. I need to contextualize this because from the time the equality um, reports were received, we've had the testing done. This is within a matter of not even two weeks that the tests were done. Um, procurement happened, referenced the various contractors to look at the situation. Assessments have been done. And I am pleased to note that throughout the weekend, starting on Friday evening, Friday evening, Saturday, and on Sunday as well, both principals and the head of our safety unit were here with the contractors, having observed what has happened. So that throughout the weekend, significant work happened. The chief education officer says deep cleaning of identified rooms have been done. However, the problem has mushroomed. We have since then found that there may be other rooms that are impacted. And so we are in a very similar fashion moving to ensure that every single room at the entry post school is not only tested, but that any deep cleaning that has to happen, any other mold remediation will be taken care of within the next couple days. Note that some situations may be more severe than others. And so it is important to look at also costing. It has cost us about $50,000 over the weekend to do all of the work that has happened. Similar works have been undertaken at the Gordon and Walcott Memorial Methodist School, where teachers also complained about being unwell due to mold infestation. Key stakeholders have applauded the government of St. Lucia for its comprehensive strategy at improving the national road network. Details in this report. With the commencement of a robust road reconstruction project rolled out by the Ministry of Infrastructure, Ports, Energy and Labor, the Ministry sought to engage stakeholders including minibus owners and operators. The Road Improvement and Maintenance Program called RIM4 spans approximately 101 kilometers of roads to be completely reconstructed around the island. In an effort to promote greater public accountability and transparency, the Department of Infrastructure hosted the Northern Membership of the National Council on Public Transportation, NCOPT, along with non-affiliates, at a special consultation on Tuesday to discuss the ongoing roads program. Permanent Secretary in the Ministry of Infrastructure, Ifa Danielle, highlighting the importance of feedback and recommendations from the minibus owners and operators, explained that once completed, the project will significantly improve the bus routes. So as we embark on this program, we do not only see the resurfacing of the road as being that impact where you could get the rideability a lot better, but we want to do, in some instances, a bit of realignment to improve the, the, the safety of the road. We want to reduce congestion and we want to make the overall um, the road a little more attractive, particularly in the back road. A lot of persons would want to get off the highway and veer into those back roads. They don't know where they're going in the first instance. And in the second instance, when you're there, you have to be stopping. You have to, to be, I mean, there are so many near misses. I, I probably myself this morning on Armandale, I must have missed, I've had so many near misses. So, these are some of the considerations that we, we come across as drivers. The consultation saw a number of recommendations from the minibus sector, many of which have received the green line from the ministry and will be implemented as part of the RIM 4. These include installation of laybys, additional bus stops along the east coast, and improved road signage island-wide. The ministry also engages in Lucia Chamber of Commerce, Industry and Agriculture. This offered the business community an opportunity to not only receive an update on the project, but to also offer suggestions and experience while directing pertinent questions on matters which required clarification. Deputy Permanent Secretary in the ministry, Calvin Lee, expanded on some key areas of the project. The ministry is looking to move forward with improving um, how we move people 
and goods and services to and from uh, different points on the island. So we are also considering, apart from alternative routes which do exist, um, we were looking at some others and some other concepts presently, uh, doing some feasibility assessments on them to see whether or not they make sense. And at the appropriate time, we'll also come back to you on those as well. Um, we're looking also to modernize the way in which we do business in terms of collecting data that would suggest traffic volumes, traffic flow, origin, destination, surveys, and so on. Um, the whole concept of intelligent mobility. So are we moving in, in, in those directions? The road improvement and maintenance program is also expected to drive productivity levels by getting goods, services, and people to their intended destinations with fewer delays. A number of concerns relating to project funding and procurement, timeliness, future scope, quality assurance and modes of communication to keep citizens informed were raised by chamber members and addressed by the ministry officials during the discussions. President of the chamber, Karen Peter, expressed gratitude for the inclusion in the process, adding that the improvements will hold great benefits for the business sector. Development is always welcomed. Um, the road ne network has to be something of importance to the business community, how we navigate, how we move the logistics, um, the northbound, southbound traffic. I'm hoping in the coming, well, probably near, not too near in distant future, that we are talking about the road network from, I believe, the Babano Gara into Louvet Beach getting off on the Denry Olio. Um, so I think that's something with what we're doing here, we don't want to lose sight of this um, other road network, which will be bring great benefit in terms of logistics and, and where the trucks, because when you look at it, you see those um, 40 foot trailer trucks in Castries. It's crazy. Um, so when we have those um, other road networks, we, we find those, we can divert the traffic and have easier flow. The U.S. $42 million road improvement and maintenance program, which was given the nod of approval by both the Chamber of Commerce and the NCOPT, has commenced with the Saltibus and Catabar roads. Further consultations are expected to be held with stakeholders in the southern part of the island. For the Government Information Service, I am General Norville. And this is the NTN Nightly. Do stay with us. When persons with TB sneeze or cough, healthy persons nearby breathe in the droplets and the bacteria can lodge in their lungs. People with weakened immune systems such as HIV AIDS, alcohol and drug users, smokers, children and the elderly are most susceptible. Persons with a cough should take precautions when in contact with persons in public places. Cover your mouth when sneezing and coughing. Visit your doctor or health center. You must complete your treatment. TB can be cured even with HIV. Be responsible. Help stop the spread of TB and HIV. Protect yourself and others. Welcome back. Prime Minister of St. Lucia and Chairman of the Caribbean Community Caricom, Honorable Alan Chastney, was the featured speaker at the Washington Times on Wednesday, October 16, 2019. The Washington Times is a U.S. daily newspaper published in Washington, D.C., reaching an average of 35 million viewers a week. Prime Minister Chastney led the discussion by focusing on issues relating to the withdrawal of correspondent banking relations in the region and the economic and security implications this has on the Caribbean region. The Prime Minister cautioned that the withdrawal of correspondent banking relations has the unintended consequence of excluding the region from the international trade and financial system. The Prime Minister also spoke to the issue of blacklisting by the EU calling this a particularly detrimental trend that can only serve to damage the region's reputation and adversely impact its competitiveness. He pointedly noted that Caribbean countries have made and often exceeded various compliance rules and regulations, while other larger countries have lagged behind. The Prime Minister called on the OECD to change its policies as it pertains to the classification of countries based solely on the GDP per capita index and to include a vulnerability index which more accurately reflects the economic realities for small island developing states or SIDS. He called for the U.S. to work more closely with the region to further enhance the bilateral relationship. Plans for the inaugural hosting of the PTOR Cup in December are well advanced as St. Lucia enters the lucrative equine industry. A number of industry players well known on the international equine stage have invested in the race with prize-winning thoroughbred horses. 
More than 50 groomsmen and other employees of the View for Beast horse race track have welcomed the arrival of 40 of those thoroughbred. Janelle Norville tells us more. For the first time ever, St. Lucia will debut an international race track located in Viewfort. The track, which was constructed by the Desert Star Holdings Company, thus far employed over 50 groomsmen, not counting the number of individuals employed in the construction fees. The newly constructed track holds immense economic value, including but not limited to the creation of a number of employment opportunities, including farriers, veterinarians, band, broodmare and stallion managers, jockeys, horse race trainers and breeders to name a few. A survey commissioned by the American Horse Council Foundation revealed that the horse industry contributes approximately $39 billion in direct economic impact to the U.S. economy and supports 1.4 million jobs on a full-time basis. The American Horse Council Foundation noted that when indirect and induced spending are included, the industry's economic impact reaches $102 billion. Senior communications officer in the office of the Prime Minister, Nicole MacDonald, indicated that while the country is expected to benefit significantly from the development, the government has no financial investment in the project. Permit me to state some facts which should clear up any misconceptions St. Lucians have about the government's part in this project. The government of St. Lucia has not purchased or facilitated the purchase of any horses for the race, meaning that no millions of dollars have been spent by the government of St. Lucia to purchase horses for this project. The construction of the racetrack has been fully funded by the investor. The government of St. Lucia has not funded the construction of the racetrack or any other aspect of this project. Let me repeat, no government funds have gone into the racetrack. The senior communications officer explained that the government's involvement in this project so far has been the relocation of the meat processing facility. A new location has been identified and the investor has committed to rebuilding the facility at that new location. Additionally, the government is in discussions to potentially become a sponsor of the race where events in Lucia will assist in the promotion of the event and the planning of a concert in Viewfort and the St. Lucia Tourism Authority will be engaged with promoting St. Lucia's new offering as a destination that additionally offers sporting activities such as horse racing. As with any project, the government is assisting by creating the ideal business environment so as to ensure a successful venture. In any project, we want to see this become a success. We want to see all projects succeed in St. Lucia. So we will work with the investor. I know that the investor is working directly with Invest St. Lucia in order to facilitate ways to make doing business a little bit easier for them, um, to guide them in terms of um, investment areas and maybe some of the things they have to go through, the processes they have to go through to get to the point where they need to get. We support our investors, both local, regional, and international. You know, and there are agencies involved in the process who would come forward and assist the investor at different levels. St. Lucia is expected to make its debut into the equine industry with the Pito Cup on National Day Friday 13th December. For the Government Information Service, I am Janelle Norville. And stay with the NTN Nightly. Up next, Primus Hutchinson is here with the NTN Nouvelle Arqueo. Frankie, you know I'm traveling to Antigua this afternoon and I forgot my passport at home? Boy, it's a good thing I have my driver's license, I'll still be able to travel. Oh, how can you travel to Antigua without your passport? Under the OECS Freedom of Movement regime, OECS citizens can travel to any of the seven protocol member states without a passport. Once they have an official and valid identification card with their picture and nationality on it. Really? Since when? Since the establishment of the Eastern Caribbean OECS Economic Union, under the revised Treaty of Bastet, it entered into force in 2011. So, you mean to tell me that I can leave St. Lucia and go to another OECS country with just my driver's license or national ID and customs and immigration won't stop me? Yes, 
You can even use your voter's registration card or social security card. As a matter of fact, as a citizen of an OECS Protocol member state, you are entitled to indefinite stay when you travel to another OECS Protocol member state. So you can live and work without a work permit or skilled national certificate. As a construction worker here, I could take my trade to Grenada or any other OECS country? Yes, Frankie. You're straight. And what about my wife and children's schooling? Frankie, OECS citizens and their children will be granted equal rights and privileges under the freedom of movement. That includes access to social services, labor market schemes, health and education for your children and your wife. This free movement thing sounds nice. Hassle-free travel to any OECS country, live and work for as long as you like. The OECS Economic Union is the real deal. For more information, visit www.oecs.org. Welcome back. We join Prime Minister Hutchinson for the NTN Nouvelle Arquea. Monsieur Ta Nisha, Monsieur Madame, Department of Kiribati Responsibility, with information and government secrecy, as a GIS, as a MP Television National PA NTN, a post to Nouvelle Arquea. Prime Primus Hutchinson. Le représentatif a créé un site pour Paris Aslawi et Kanawi, qui aussi c'est ministre des Affaires touristiques, on est Abdou Dominic Fede, ouvert officiellement un nouveau produit touristique en web de Paris Sala. Établissement touristique Sala qui a porté nos glittering sands et qui a trouvé un trou logé au village Aslawi. Facilité touristique Sala, c'est propriétaire cette licence et a bas conduit cette licence seulement. L'année a peu près 20 personnes qui employent puis établissement sorti ni en Slaoui et aussi en Canaoui. Bridge Park là où se voit premier secret étranger qui est sorti à bord bateau touriste pour pour obtenir un joli temps en tant que de cela. Représentatif honorable Dominique Fede, vous remarquez que ça touche tout le monde. Il a ajouté que ça a montré le commitment du gouvernement pour agenter le développement sustainable, pour établir le travail pour le peuple et pour faire assurer que les jeunes, les plus grands citoyens, n'ont pas l'occasion pour pouvoir l'avantage de cela n'importe quoi tu es à cette ici. Facilité à apporter divers amusements et aussi manger à diverses façons, boissons, divers articles des cadeaux, en parmi plusieurs autres nécessités. On a fait des déclarer que Yon Kaiwe qui facilité à bâtir à façon pour embrasser l'événement et c'est une grande manifestation en qualité et fort que tout le monde mette ensemble pour faire Beach Park ça la réalité. Glittering Sands Beach Park est ouvert officiellement le 15 octobre l'année 2019. Les étudiants qui n'ont été en divers sports ont déjà commencé l'étude en première institution des affaires sport à cette ci C'est le Sports Academy qui a trouvé un établissement qui était l'école secondaire Gozileava. Commencé l'opération en septembre en Pastoral Center, mais entré officiellement en institution sala en mois d'octobre. Mais juste l'école là, Delia Charles, vous remarquez que ces étudiants étaient très excités pour commencer à étudier. Il dit aussi que le gouvernement a poussé un peu de force des institutions pour ça. Le gouvernement a mis un challenge à l'école ça là. C'est ma mère qui a appris des choses sport et académiques. L'année. Dom manager, dom parent, sports director, et gouvernement, car aussi bio, tout manger yo, um, uniforme yo, yo ni pour servir, gay yo, et l'autre bagay. Madame Charles dit aussi, la kaye ni bon sécurité pour protection des étudiants. Aussi, curriculum là, ça c'est tout bagay, tout um, si j'ai yo kaye ni pour Study. Tout ça a en place et que nous avons réalisé. Ça, c'est un bon bagage. Le gouvernement a placé une notification pour mon public là qui a pris pétrole à sur la place internationale. J'ai un changement. Ça, c'est pris gasoline, diesel, LPG 20, 22 et 100 livres. Puis, quand vous avez un même prix, ce changement a commencé 
the vete octob de mil disnev pui gasoline hose sorti de dollar ek twashle nev godesu palit ebe 12 dollar ek dis godesu u 12 dollar ek yonshle de go pagalo diesel hose sorti de dollar ek twashle sengo pu de dollar ek twashle once go palit ebe 12 dollar ek twashle kat godesu u 12 dollar ek yonshle 6 godesu pagalo Kauzin was a mempuya, sasi, yodola, ek twashle twa godesu, palit, ebe yid dollar, ek six go, pagalo. Cylinder ve livla, widwi, soti twa de dollar, ek yonchle de go, pu twa te dollar, ek yonchle set go, pa cylinder. Cylinder ve de livla, widwi, soti twa sek dollar, ek twashle twa godesu, pu twa kat dollar, ek twashle twa godesu, pa cylinder. Cylinder yon sa liv la, widwi, soti desa sek dola ek wons go, pou desa dola ek desh le wons go desu pa cylinder. Gouvernement ka informe public la, lot wanjman asou pwip etwal ka y ledi li wons novam l'ane 2019. Ek se kosa nou atwa bout novel la, mou ka remesyo outan pou ka gade, mou ka ba yon invitasyon pou jwenet pi mou ka konsidye konsa ve la vi, nou ka presa to a lot novel a kwe ol. A presa, mou ka vye presa to ou. Nisha. Mesti Opil Primus, and here's a look at what's happening to us weather-wise. Fair to partly cloudy skies becoming cloudy at times with unscattered showers and possibly isolated thunderstorms. Moisture and instability in the lower atmosphere over the region will cause some scattered showers and possibly isolated thunderstorms over portions of the Lesser Antilles during the next 24 hours. Two tropical waves located over the central tropical Atlantic are moving westward near 12 miles per hour or 19 kilometers per hour. The tide for Castries Harbour was low at 3.59 p.m. and will be high again at 10.40 p.m. The tide for Vieux Fort Bay was low at 5.26 p.m. and will be high again at 11.47 p.m. The sea is slight to moderate with waves 3 to 5 feet or 0.9 to 1.5 meters. The sun will rise Wednesday at 5.56 a.m. And that brings us to the end of the NTN Nightly. Join us next time at 7 p.m. with a repeat at 7 a.m. You can also catch up with us anytime on the St. Lucia Government Facebook page or YouTube channel. I'm Nisha Charles. <laughs>